cataractcoach.com. Pearls for presbyopic IOLs. Now, these are great lenses, but we've got a few pearls here. Number one, achieve the target of Plano. Now, the patients are not going to be happy if you don't hit that post-op target of Plano. So this is where the trifocal lenses, where you're getting a great range of vision, you really have to hit the target. If you end up minus a half, patient's not going to be happy. They're going to say distance vision is too blurry. I don't like it. And you don't want to deal with that kind of grief. So you really need to hit that Plano target for these patients. So you look at the lens calcs. Yeah, of course, ideal is perfect Plano. That's beautiful. If you can get absolutely Plano, zero, zero, zero across the board, that's fantastic. But even being a half diopter hyperopic is better than ending up myopic. So don't let these patients end up minus a half or more. Now they'll be so happy. And the patients say, thank you. I'm so happy with the new vision. So truly, a lot of the happiness depends on achieving that goal. And there this patient is with his granddaughter who's happy. Now, of course, the cataract surgery part's relatively routine, even in these presbyopic lenses. You can see from this sped up video, we can chop, chop that cataract up, remove it from the eye pretty easily. There's the epinuclear shell. We'll clean this up and get the new uh, lens in. There's the lens. We've got a nice trifocal lens here. And these trifocal lenses are now becoming the most standardly used presbyopic IOL in our practice. Now, we also do have extended up the focus lenses, but those don't truly give that full range of vision. You really need to use a trifocal lens if you are going to achieve the distance, intermediate, and near vision in both eyes. And that's an important consideration. So we're using trifocal lenses here as our gold standard. And in our practice, again, it's not a huge percent of the patients, but it's significant. And here at the end, an LRI, make sure you knock down that astigmatism as well, even a haptopter. Number two, center the eye well precisely. Are you looking at what is the optical center, the pupil center, the visual axis? There's the angle alpha between the visual axis and the optical center. You have to know what angle alpha is. So you can see on this patient, is it reasonable? That's pretty good. But you also want to look at other things. Angle kappa, the distance between the visual axis and the pupil center. So make sure the angle kappa is not too big. So all these things can be analyzed ahead of time. And there are a lot of machines in your clinic that will do this on an automated basis. So choose patients with a very small angle alpha and small angle kappa. Therefore, when you line up that presbyopic lens and those concentric rings, they're beautifully centered. So here's a good example, a great candidate. All three of these, optical center, pupil center, visual axis, they're almost identical. They're almost in the same position right there in the center. And this patient, therefore, will have a beautiful outcome in this. And this patient is happy now. Look, I have a pretty wide range of vision without glasses. Such a happy patient. So trifocal patients can be uh, very happy. And then they say also the night vision, glen halos, they're not too bad. Very acceptable. Pearl, pearl three, under promise and over deliver. So patients like this that complain, oh, I can't see well for some. It's time for some Google homework. And they figure out what they want. They want perfect vision and extra vision. And they're young again. No, 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 no. You can't have that. No matter what you pay, you can't have that. So I say, no, let's have a compromise. We'll do a diffractive lens, a trifocal lens, and you can, you, you can live with these compromises. Now, I do show them this image quality in, um, simulation. And you can see there's a mild quality between, and sunlight here between a monofocal and trifocal. Remember, trifocal lenses, of course, they are making a compromise. So I want to show this to a patient and say, look, there can be a difference here in the image quality. Now, in a bright sunlight image like this, it's not much difference. In some shade, maybe a little more difference, but still pretty good in both images. But I want to under-promise for the patient and then over-deliver. But yes, for sure, trifocal lens implants, as you can see here, do cause a little bit of image quality issues. You can't have everything. You can't cheat physics. So especially at nighttime, you can see there's less contrast with a trifocal lens compared to a monofocal lens. In both images, you can see perfectly fine. And certainly both are much better than the cataract that the patient already has. So that's a good thing for the patient. They can be very happy. So again, I want to really under-promise this. And I'll show simulations too of the nighttime vision, a monofocal appearance of oncoming car headlights versus trifocal. And you see there certainly are some halos or rings around the trifocal lens implant images. And that's to be expected. That's how the lens works. You can't turn off the diffractive rings. At nighttime, those rings are there permanently. So by showing this image, patients usually say to me, oh, it's really not that bad. Now the glare and halos at night tend to diminish with time. 
So after three, four, five, six months, these patients have a lot better night vision because the brain naturally filters these things out. It's the nature of what we call neuroadaptation. Or think of it this way. The people who live, live near the airport, they never hear the planes flying, do they? But you do. So look at an example here. Here's near vision without glasses. So the trifocal lens certainly gives better near vision than a monofocal lens set for Plano. But what happens if you put on your glasses? So you have to explain that near vision with glasses, if you use a monofocal lens, is going to be even better. And here's an example there showing you that there's near vision with glasses. Now you can see the image on the left, the monofocal lens set for Plano, but you're wearing near glasses plus 250 readers is actually better than the opposite side, which is the trifocal lens implant. Same with the phone here. You have a cell phone without glasses, so certainly if you have a trifocal lens, you can see everything there. You can read it, and you can see all the small print, but the cell phone with glasses with a monofocal lens is even a bit sharper, a little bit better contrast. And that's to be expected there. So that's pearl number three. Number four, only normal corneas and retinas. So when you're putting these in, who's the ideal trifocal patient? It's the one where the patient has a normal, healthy cornea. That also means a good, healthy, normal tear film, as well as a normal retina. So here's a patient. You can see toric lens and hyperopic lens, so 27 diopters. So this patient is already starting off as hyperopic with significant astigmatism, but luckily a totally normal cornea, a good tear film, and a nice, healthy, normal retina. As a result, this patient will be absolutely thrilled with this trifocal lens because, again, this patient also had a significant cataract. So we fixed the cataract, the hyperopia, the astigmatism, all in one setting, also addressing the presbyopia. And you can see this lens goes in the bag quite nicely, and the patient will have a beautiful outcome here. So, again, look at your patients carefully. When you look at the corneas, make sure they're totally normal. No irregularities. Make sure any astigmatism in this cornea is completely symmetric. Here's a patient with a little iris prolapse. Guess what? Remember, there's a 27 and a half diopter lens. There's a shallow eye, shallow AC, small eye, highly hyperopic patient. This patient, again, is going to be thrilled. That's why we had the iris prolapse. This is an unusual eye. Look how big that 6 millimeter optic looks inside this eye. So this patient not only had a normal tear film and normal cornea, the patient had a nice regular and symmetric degree of astigmatism. Patient also has a normal macula. This is not a great lens for someone who has optic nerve issues like glaucoma and visual field loss. This is not a great lens for someone who has maculopathy, whether that's a macular degeneration and a severe epiretinal membrane, a macular pucker, a macular hole, etc. Probably not a great choice in someone who has bad diabetic retinopathy. So what you want to do is choose the appropriate patients here. And a patient like this is going to be absolutely thrilled. Be careful of the patients who are low myopes, the patients with minus two myope who now takes off glasses to read up close and then wears glasses for faraway vision may not be entirely pleased compared to this patient who's highly hyperopic. And again, achieving that nice centration of the lens, these patients can have a very beautiful outcome. And my last pearl here is, you got to give time for neuroadaptation, at least six months. So here's a patient again, myopic eye this time, 15 diopter lens, trifocal lens. Now these patients, I always tell them, it's like living near the airport. The patients who live near the airport, they don't actually hear the airplanes landing or taking off. But when you go to their house, you may be startled. And it's because they've neuroadapted to living there. And so their brain naturally just filters out those incredibly loud sounds of those airplanes. So same with neuroadaptation for these trifocal lenses. At the six-month mark, these patients are really not bothered by the nighttime halo or glare. And they see very well. And they're very happy. 99% of them would choose this lens again. I do explain that there's a visual range with each lens type. And you can see in this graph here, I dispel the idea that you cannot be 25 years old again. That's that green line at the very top. We all wish we could be young again, 25 years old, amazing vision from near to far and perfect night vision. And that's going to happen. The yellow line is what a distance vision lens implant is. So good night vision. But again, there's no significant near vision. And then if you look at the blue or the orange lines, those are with a, a bifocal lens. You can see there 
or the by the blue is a trifocal lens. So yes, like pretty good range there. The vision's clear, but not perfect. So these patients then are going to be very happy.